from the makers of Coldwater Omo. The ugly old kitchen clock looked down on the scullery of the house. The room had seen better days. Days when it had been filled with sounds of servants' chatter, the clatter of cooking utensils and trays piled with crockery, the smells of good food and the heat of the coal stoves and steam boilers. Now it was different. Electrical appliances had replaced the old-fashioned methods, but the room was still dominated by a large, scrubbed wooden table. A shadow fell across it. The shadow of a man. He held a candlestick in one hand, and by the flickering light he gazed at the glossy cover of a magazine. He placed the candle on the table and opened the magazine. It's here somewhere. The man stopped at an article in the magazine and read, Better Bridge with Applied Mathematics by Mrs. Emma Peel. There, sure enough, was a photograph of Mrs. Peel. A very lush, full-page colour reproduction. It was an attractive pose, and from the dimpled smile and twinkling eyes, it was clear that Mrs. Peel knew quite a lot more about life than how to play bridge. The man's hands lingered over the page, stroking the glossy surface of Mrs. Peel's face. Then, he ripped the page from the magazine, and with a pair of kitchen scissors, began to cut the picture into small pieces. When the page lay in fragments on the table, the large, hairy hands reached out and began to reassemble the picture. He chuckled as he worked. <laughs> Twisting the features, rearranging them, an eye appeared in the center of the forehead, an ear sat on one cheek, and a hank of hair grew from the pink lips. <laughs> it became a monstrous, sinister, obscene jigsaw. The owner of the hairy hands clenched them until the gnarled knuckles turned white. His laughter grew wilder. <laughs> he seized a kitchen knife and hacked at the pieces in a frenzy of madness. <laughs> Someone doesn't like you, Mrs. Peel. The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. South African housewives are delighted with the sparkling clean wash they get from cold water Omo. Like Mrs. Connie Goldie of the Inneken. Well, I found myself without any hot water one Monday morning. Yes. So I dashed out and I bought a packet of cold water Omo. And I've never been without cold water Omo since. Yes, once an Omo user, always an Omo user. Omo cleans best. Over one million South African housewives have proved it. To keep your complexion soft and smooth, choose Lux with its creamy, moisturizing lather and precious perfume. Lux, a beauty treatment as you bathe. Episode one of this story, in which John Steed is forced to sit out the first round of the game, and Emma Peel suspects that somewhere in the background lurks a joker. On a rather misty morning, 
Emma Peel drove carefully across London to John Steed's Mew's apartment. She was dressed in a warm, dark red trouser suit with a gay scarf at the neck. She looked very like the recent photographs of herself that appeared in the glossy magazines. She was in a carefree mood and hummed quite cheerfully as she parked the car outside Steed's home. A few moments later, John Steed, who was upstairs, heard the front doorbell ring. Coming! Steed made his way downstairs quite quickly. Too quickly, perhaps. Halfway <laughs> downstairs, Steed tripped, lost his balance and fell heavily, dragging a few ornaments with him. He landed painfully on one ankle. It promptly gave way. <laughs> Mrs. Peel, hearing the crash, tried the door. It opened. Steed? Steed, what's happened? Mrs. Peel, you are needed. What on earth have you done? Came downstairs to answer the door. Forgot it wasn't locked. I fell. Hurt my ankle. Mm. Well, let's have a look. Ooh, nasty. Yeah, painful, too. Come on, let's get you up into a chair. Oh. Oh. Uh. Bath? Well, you look clean enough. Oh, I see what you mean. Well, I don't know about a wheelchair, but you must certainly keep off that leg for a while. There. Better? Uh, thanks. <sighs> Lucky you didn't break it. As it is, your tango may be irreparably damaged. Tango? I'm not as old hat as all that. I'm, I'm getting with it. Well, it's obvious that you got as far as the twist. This ankle's very badly sprained. What do we do about it? Get a doctor? No, get a drink. Over there, three, three fingers of scotch. Right. What uh, brought you here this misty morning? Well, I was going to ask you to drive me down to Exmoor. Here, that should kill the pain a bit. Thanks. Cheers. Cheers. <clears throat> I suppose I shall have to take myself down there now. Exmoor? Who the devil is an Exmoor? Sir Cavalier Rausicana. He sounds like an opera. He's probably the greatest bridge player in Europe. He read my article that appeared in a magazine lately. Anyway, he wants to meet me. Oh? He's invited me down to his house for the weekend. Oh. Sir Cavalier is 75. Oh, just the same. Be careful. You know what a rejuvenating effect you have on people. I mean, look at me. I, I feel better already. Hardly any pain in the leg at all. Well, almost not. It's quite a privilege to meet Sir Cavalier. He hardly ever sees anyone. Hmm, well, he could have a very small fan mail. Well, if you're dead set on this jaunt, I suppose you'd better get going. Well, don't let me delay you. I'm sure you'll be all right? Quite sure. Now, you run along and enjoy yourself. I only wish I was coming with you, but... Oh, well, it was not to be, thanks to those blasted stairs. Bye, Mrs. Peel. Goodbye, Steve. Mrs. Peel left. A short while later, she was driving through the cold English countryside, her scarf catching the breeze, a smile on her face. Could it be that she rather liked going without John Steed? Careful, Mrs. Peel, you may regret this newfound freedom. As for Steed, back in his apartment, he hobbled painfully across the room to the cigar humidor. He selected one, poured himself another brandy, lit the cigar, and was about to enjoy both when the doorbell rang again. Steed limped across the room, down the small passage, and opened the door. George. George Fancy. Hello, Steed. Oh, come in, come in. Nice to see you. Go ahead, I'll have to hobble up from behind. Oh, what's happened? You run into counter-espionage, tangled with the minions of a mastermind? Oh, something far more sinister. Uh, I fell down the stairs. My word, you weren't... Uh, uh, certainly not. Uh, but speaking of a drink, would you like one? Oh, uh, well, thanks, yes, just one. You wouldn't like to help yourself, would you? Just poured myself one. Oh, uh, yes, 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 of course. Ah, I hope it's not inconvenient calling like this. Oh, it's a pleasure. As you see, I'm confined to barracks at the moment. Yes. Well, actually, I only called to uh, warn you. Cheers. Cheers. Um, warn me of what? Remember Max Prendergast? <laughs> Remember? Impossible to forget him. He's out. Out? A prison? Broke jail two days ago. Two days ago? The French authorities didn't think to tell us until they realized he's heading this way. Steed? We're pretty sure he's here, in London. Hmm. Max Prendergast. You know the kind of man he is? That mad, warped sense of humor? Oh, yes, I know. Of all people, I know. Steed, will you tell Mrs. Peel? 
Mrs. Peel? Well, she was more involved with Prentigast than anyone. She ought to be warned, don't you think? Yes. Yes, I do. I'll tell her on Monday. She'll be tucked away quite safely in the country for the next couple of days. Now, I'll tell her on Monday. No point in spoiling her weekend. Hmm. Max Prendergast, eh? I don't like the idea of him on the loose. Not one little bit. Mrs. Peel had had quite a tiring drive. Her good spirits had begun to wilt as the mist turned into fog. She lost her way a couple of times down the country lanes and was quite relieved when at last she found a sign pointing off the road which read Rousicana Hall. She turned up the drive and minutes later parked the car. The house looked impressive from what she could see of it. She ran up the steps, carrying her weekend case, and rang the doorbell. While she waited, she glanced around, peering out into the fog. She was quite unaware that in the laurel bushes, not more than a few yards away, a man was peering back at her. Two large, hairy hands parted the branches, and then the door opened. Good afternoon. I'm Emma Peel. Oh, uh, hello. Um, Sir Cavalier is expecting me. Yes, he told me. Do come in. That's if you want to. Well, that was the idea of coming down here. And with this fog... I love fog. They're cosy. This way. The interior of the house was dim and shadowy. Heavy antique furniture filled the hall and the main rooms. The strange young lady led Mrs. Peel into a slightly more cheerful-looking drawing room and closed the door. My name's Ola. Ola Monzi Chamberlain. Isn't it a shriek? <laughs> Monzi was a pirate. <laughs> I was lying on the bed when you rang the bell. Oh, sorry. I'm a bit late, I'm afraid. Got lost a couple of times. Oh, I'm not surprised. This case is the end of the world, isn't it? I'm not surprised you got lost. I like your coat. Oh, uh, thank you. I was reading an Italian book. I don't understand Italian, but I love reading it aloud. The words sound so nice. They roll off the tongue. Do you play bridge? Yes. I hate bridge. You're not a dentist, are you? Uh, no, why? Well, I have two fillings. It needs seeing to. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I can't be any help to you, Miss Chamberlain. Don't you think you should tell Sir Cavalier that I'm here? Oh, my goodness. Didn't I mention it? He isn't here. He was called away this morning, a meeting in town. The IBPC, the, uh... International Bridge Players Convention. Uh, yes. I see. <laughs> Well, when will he be back? Well, sometime tonight, I think. Oh, he apologized. Would you like to see your room now? I hope you like the old homestead. Oh, I mean, it's, a, it's very impressive. Oh, you are being kind. It's sinister and old and filled with dead things. Yes, the dead could live here very easily. An ideal place for a murder, I always think. <laughs> I'm sure you'll agree before you've been here for long. This way. Pepsodent has Erlium, an amazing discovery that actually polishes teeth so sparkling clean and white, dulling film can't find a hole. Feel the difference with your tongue. You wonder where the dullness went when you polish your teeth with Pepsodent. New Pepsodent, the white toothpaste you can feel working. Pepsodent, 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 Pepsodent. Once an OMO user, always an OMO user. So many housewives, like Mrs. Adnall, say. I wash every single thing in cold water anode. Anything that's washable come out spotlessly clean. Yes, OMO cleans best. The 
Avengers. Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Brought to you by the makers of Coldwater Omo.